Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to be covering generate statements. So there was a recent question on Stack Overflow. Uh, Stack Overflow is a programming site where you can ask questions and um, I recommend using it. I use it a lot. Uh, but there was a recent question there about Verilog regarding delaying a signal by a certain number of cycles. And that certain number of cycles should be a parameter, so it should be controlled. So in effect, um, the user was asking the following. Whether he can pass some data in and delay it by a number of cycles, and that number of cycles should be controlled by a parameter. Now what's happening here is very similar to a uh, shift register, except instead of shifting all the data out, we just look look at the very end. So for example, if we just pass the data in, four clock cycles later, the data will come out at the end. So this will delay the signal by four clock cycles. So effectively, um, this is what uh, the user is asking about. Uh, so one way to do it is to use a shift register, just like was done over here, and create a shift register, and then uh, basically just read in read out the last value of the shift register and that's going to be your output. Uh, another way to do it is using a generate statement. Now a generate statement, which is the topic of this discussion, effectively generates code. So this is one way to generate very long code. And this code is generated before the simulation starts. Uh, so you can generate some code before the simulation starts and you can use certain things to generate code. Most often you're going to use para some parameters um, to control what type of code is going to be generated. Um, so another th cool thing about Stack Overflow is that when you post examples there you can provide links, links to your code. So in this case uh, I answered this question and I provided a link to this code that can be run on EDA Playground. So we're going to go ho ahead and go to that code and uh, just to take a quick peek we're going to dump waves for this code so we're going to add the dump bars and we're just going to dump everything and uh, let's explain this code a little bit. Uh, so on the design side we have a basically a simple D flip-flop. Uh, it's pretty straightforward just like any other default flop and um, and here we have our module for the shifting for the data shifting we have a parameter that's going to control how deep the shift is going to be and um, and we um, output data out um, and the data out is created um, because we have a, um, a connect wire, a connect wire that's going to connect all these different deep flip flops together. And basically the data out is going to be the last, last connect wire. And the first connect wire is going to be the data in coming in. So this connect wire is the key element here because it will connect up all these deep flip flops together. So in the generate statement, uh, we loop for the depth of, of our desired depth and then we generate D flip-flops for every one, every one um, point in that depth. Now the D flip-flops will have clock and reset coming in and those clock and reset are taken straight from the inputs. And then the connect wire is the key here because the, the connect wires basically takes the previous connect wire and the current connect wire. And um, the the uh, number of connect wires here is actually um, depth plus one because uh, we go from three to zero so there's going to be a total of four connect wires in this example so the first one's going to be data in and the last one's going to be data out now another thing to note here is there's a genvar statement so genvar um, unlike a parameter or a reg a genvar can only be used inside the generate statement. So that is um, that is specifically for a generate statement. Uh, so going over on the test bench side, 
we basically instantiate the, the wires to hook up and our shift module it's on its name shift here we set the parameter here and we actually set the parameter to 4 so to override the default one uh, there's a free running clock and then basically we uh, send the data in uh, wait a little bit um, change it to 0 and then that's about it so let's uh, run this example and take a look at uh, what the waves show us. Alright, the waves have been reloaded. First at the top level we've got uh, our basic signal, free running clock, the data in is coming in and uh, I believe the parameter is 4 so it should be delaying it by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 rising clock edges. That's what the count here is. Now another thing you, you might notice and is this is where this generated code is. You see all these gen block and the naming may be different um, for different simulators but it looks like Icarus Verilog is using this, this type of naming convention. So let's uh, dump all these signals. I believe I'm doing them in, in opposite order and uh, you can see the shifting is actually happening because each one of these is just a D flip flop. So it, it receives an input, then it outputs it at the rising clock edge. So you can see the delay is actually happening. It's delayed one here, another one here, another one here, and this is the final one that lines up with the output. Um, so this is the basic example of a generate statement. Now, in this case, for the generate statement, we use the for loop which is a very very often um, is, is what done in the generate statement you want to generate a bunch of modules and you're going to use a for loop and just you know lay them down however inside the generate statement it's also possible to use other things um, to control what you generate uh, you could have an if else statement or a case statement and I'm just going to show a very simple simple example I'm going to do a, a fresh playground here and I'm just gonna do a couple simple modules that don't actually have anything in them except uh, some identifying information. I am A. We're gonna do a module A, and then we're gonna do a module B. Just just so we have two different modules. One's gonna say I am A. The other one's gonna say I am B. And in this case, we're gonna we're gonna instantiate them, and we're gonna use the generate statement to control which one is generated. So let's say let's give a parameter. Let's call the parameter power. You know, oftentimes you want to do different things depending on the power requirements of your design. For example, you might want to have a design that has a high power version and a low power version. Um, so in this case we don't need a, a gen var because we're not going to be looping so we don't need a temporary variable uh, to store anything in. So the generate statement is, starts with generate and ends with end generate. And inside uh, we're going to do, um, we're going to check the power. If power is greater than 2 let's say and you can use begin and end statement that will work here. we're going to create a module A. So A, A, and I'm um, just going to call it A. Otherwise, we're going to create a module B. So in this case, the power is greater than 2, so A should be created. And then the only thing that's going to happen in the sim is that uh, one of these display statements can fire, but not both, because we're only going to create one of them. All right, let's run it. OK, you see I am A, so in this case, a was called. So now let's um, let's change this power to one and run it. And now in this case, a, the B was created. So as you can see, you can use uh, if else, and the case statement is very similar to this. Instead of if else, just replace it with a case statement. All right, this concludes uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching.